Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. Today we're going to solve uh, what once was a wicked problem. Um, and so this is going to touch on uh, being of interest to those interested in Polymer, um, those interested in Web Components, those interested in Drupal, and, and uh, Elm's Learning Network and learning a little bit about our process. So um, I enjoy making outlandish statements, so I'll start out with one. Um, the uh, course information system, which is uh, the initial landing uh, thing in Elm's Learning Network that kind of helps you build everything in the universe, uh, is terrible. It's incredibly poorly designed. Um, you start off, you have no idea what your context is when you're coming from nothing. Um, you see this plus sign, you go, oh, okay, maybe, all right, I set up a course, right? And um, then after the fact, as you build out courses, you're like, I've got this hideously ugly list with these awful box things. Well, that's because it's, you know, it was only ever half designed. Um, and so you can kind of trace its history and design pattern through our issue queue. Um, so even just pulling out two of them, you see, you know, take note, this is June or July of uh, 2016. So we're riding on, you know, two years ago. Um, hey, this is awful. It should do things like this <laughs> um, and do it faster uh, because it's pretty, it's clunky. It's, um, you know, if I want to filter this, I can do this. And you saw that little bot throbber there. Okay, so this is Drupal, Drupal 7 views is what's powering this and some template theming. And then we did some lightweight materialize, uh, material design spec types of things to at least make it less, a little less terrible, but it's still pretty bad. So this issue never had anything happen to it because uh, then we, we moved on. Okay, so a few months later, and the, the because was we didn't have any design inspiration. It was just, hey, uh, here's some checkboxes. So found this, threw it in here. Um, can't remember exactly where this is from, but really like the, just the little, the nice little card, a color. Um, in this case, it was, you know, who the faculty member was. I, I want to say this is from like a Coursera or one of those. Um, but so this is, you know, some design inspiration, right? And it's using some of the material design aspects, right? There's the, the iconography. Uh, this is a card. It's got a heading to it and the three dots for more information. So it's not perfect, but it's at least better. And um, as you'll note, this has just kept getting bounced through as to how to do it. Um, so today I'm gonna do this. I'm going to make, uh, this came up as a request, um, again, pressing request for, you know, uh, we have a portfolio that has, you know, several hundred of these. And this is just not sustainable to even just find something at that point, which means it's a design flaw. So. Um, now we actually have all the building blocks we need to start to attack problems like this really quickly. And so I figured instead of me um, attacking it, I spent, you know, I certainly spent about five minutes this morning and had a, a large chunk of it uh, positioned. Um, I wanted to kind of do it as a screen tutorial here so you could get a sense of the, what our development uh, workflow is. Uh, when it comes to Polymer and the way we're leveraging web components in our system. So the first thing we do is we don't assume information. So we say, okay, well, we have a general data model of something, right? And so if I edit, this is an, an edit form in Drupal again, ugh. Um, I've got, you know, a title. I've got the ability to upload a banner so I can support an image. Um, and then I've got some other miscellaneous information program classification. Uh, but the real critical pieces of a course in our system uh, from an information perspective is when is that course being offered and um, you know what's active uh, is this course uh, uh, published to the listing right so then should it show up so that starts to formulate what should appear on that home page uh, how do people go to edit things how do they search and find things those can be larger ux questions but the important thing with our data models that we know we have a thing it has a title, it has some additional details, right? Like this is the longer title and this might be, let's make this something realistic in an education context. This might be like um, math 100 and this might be like um, intro to algebra. Okay. Um, then I might have a photo of some kind. Um, and so if that's our data model that we're working with here, how do we how do we do anything with that? So, you know, first uh, I got got that saved. Let's um, let's actually select a banner as well. I have some little banners here that we use for some of our art courses. Um, 
Oh, I need to make, make the banner bigger. Um, all right, so open this up real quick. And again, there was another little UX thing there. Um, so I know that the banner has to be at least 1200 by 200, I believe it is. Save that, that was a more recent thing since when we created these, there we go. So we've got the banner uploaded there, uh, save. All right, so it's gonna save. And now we've got something that should have some half decent looking information to it. Um, now the current UX flow, I click math 100 and you see there's that banner there. And so then the idea is from Elm's perspective and a design consistency perspective, when I jump to different addresses, in this case, if I'm now engaging in course material, um, I have that banner in place, I have my titles in place to match, even though I actually went somewhere different. Um, so it's kind of, you know, just to get a really high level, what is the concept of Elm's Learning Network? So whenever I would go and want to manage, you know, media associated with this course, again, context in place, this is a development environment, you're going to see a lot of weird messages. Uh, if I had to do a compliance audit, again, it's in place, if I, if I wanted to have conversations about this. And so we can kind of build out this, this network of systems um, uh, using similar UX patterns. So let's work on the CIS to make this thing usable. Um, we have all the tools we need uh, with Polymer and some automation. So uh, this is the design inspiration, right? We want to make cards and present those things as cards. So how do we go from where we have now to there? Well, if you look in the LRN Web Components GitHub repo, uh, one, we've got 119 repos. This, rep this organization is not even a year old. Uh, we have multiple contributors um, producing elements. It's pretty awesome. Um, but let's go and uh, let's search for how we are able to get elements in here so fast. And that's LRN developer. So I have LRN developer installed, um, but just the, the real brief idea, and we're actually gonna replace this with a Yeoman in the near future, um, is it basically just gives you a nice little CLI and some, some quick scripts to kind of build this stuff out faster. Then it provides boilerplate elements that are really easy to get from boilerplate to uh, contributed to webcomponents.org is the, the basic idea. So uh, I have that installed already. So as a result, I can do LRN dev and I get our little CLI. Again, this will be Yeoman in the future. Um, so I'm going to build a one page app. Um, and actually, you know, before I do that, I'm gonna go into LRN dev developer and make sure I have the latest. Okay, LRN dev, build a one page app. We're gonna call this uh, LRN app, because uh, this is a, a learning application and it's for the CIS. Now, the CIS is not really a, a universally used term, but it's short for course information system. So imagine this is a, a listing of courses. Uh, we try to build these things out in such a way, you see it's, it's going now. Um, so it's gonna go get all these different dependencies to give me a pretty solid starting point um, then it's going to attempt to commit it to version control, but it won't be able to. Um, and so you'll see the other part of our, my process, I have to go to LRN Web Components, hit new, and let's add a repository for LRN app, a learning application for visualizing course information, slash listings. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Create repo. Now that repo exists, I'm not actually gonna do these, these sides of it. I'm going to open a new window, or sorry, a new terminal here. We'll make it a nice size. Um, what that created via the automation script there is I get a LRN web component slash LRN app hyphen CIS. And so our directory tree, kind of how we manage all of these, uh, you know, we have a hundred and some odd of them. Uh, if, if we have Elms LN and we've got its own little universe of thought, all our web components happen off of this LRN web components. And so we have all of our web components built side by side. Uh, we actually have a script that goes and pulls all of them initially in case you, you know, are a core developer type of a thing. Um, so, you know, if you've seen other one pass ones, there's, you know, awesome explosion, things like that. So I can actually find that LRN app right there. There's LRN app CIS. And I can see that it, it went and got Bower dependencies it renamed some files appropriately. So there's LRN app CIS, LRN app CIS, um, and, and so on. So 
Now, if I want to add dependencies in, I'm in the right directory. I can do that via Bower. I can search webcomponents.org, find stuff. So let's find it in an IDE here. Got LRN app CIS. And SRC, SRC, LRN app CIS. There we go. All right, so this is our boilerplate. It's just hello world. And actually, if you looked at what opened, hey, there we go, hello world. Uh, so it did polymer serve uh, dash dash open, which just opens up uh, a little mini server for polymer to run. You can immediately say, hey, there's a missing favicon, which someone someone has points out every time I do one of these. So all it's doing at the end is it's printing that one tag on the page. And so we've got LRN app CIS, woo. Okay, so let's start to make this into a real thing. Um, this will be a mix of me kind of talking through my process, but actually just sort of doing it. So uh, first I want to document this. And so we got a learning application for visualizing course information and listening. Okay, and put CIS in our microcopy area here. And CIS is short for course information system, just so people know the mental model a little bit more. All right, um, fun thing about building uh, with web components is then you can start stealing from yourself. So uh, to steal from ourselves in a meaningful way, it helps if you know that we built something called LRN App Open Studio. And LRN App Open Studio, um, which we we'll go to, sure, why not? LRN App Open Studio is right there. And so these are different blocks that are delivered via Polymer. See, it's got a little card uh, with me uh, kicking back. And then I can do view studio projects. And you see we have this listing of studio projects. And the studio projects have who submitted them uh, with an icon, some common information, and you know me there. right? And I could click and I could jump to those. I could switch between different displays, get it as a table. Uh, all of these are web components, You know the button and the filtering. Everything is a web component. So the way that this is built is architecturally very similar to what we're going for, right? Where our, our mood image right here of this these cards, we really want to visualize things as those cards. So I can I can use a lot of the conventions that were leveraged in this uh, in this new one. So let's look at LRN app Open Studio, which is driving a lot of that. We can see it uses something called gallery card. Now I'm not going to use gallery card outright um, because uh, it has certain implications as far as what it is displaying. But if we look at gallery card, we can see that gallery card has uh, support for avatar, paper, elevate, you know, uh, height, elevation, um, mouse enter, mouse leave events. So it's doing all of that um, type of stuff. Um, I actually really like this, but not specifically for this purpose. So when something like that happens, um, we copy and paste, because why the heck not? So I'm gonna copy this LRN design gallery card that I've already made again. So like as you as you adopt these approaches, it gets easier and easier to keep making different things. Um, so this is gonna be LRN app uh, CIS. You don't have to namespace in that way, I just like to, uh, course card, okay. And then, so now that is what we're gonna use the base for our import there. These, I'm not gonna worry about. Um, and then you see we have some other things that are pulled in. Now there's a little bit of magic going on with this. There actually are a lot more imports that need resolved for this to show up, uh, but we, we stuff them all in, our build, in a build file. Um, but uh, let's say a lot of this we can, we can steal as our starting point. So let's actually uh, go through, let's see, I don't want any of this submission click stuff, handling a response, I don't don't care about that right now, loading a submission URL, don't care about that right now, filtering, filtering, a delete toast, submission complete. So I don't actually want a lot of the routing types of aspects of this that, um, that it claims it needs out of the box. What I will start to pull from though is um, in the properties object, um, as well as some of the, the styling Convention. So you see we have a loading thing, um, iron selector, uh, those gallery cards and a grid, right? So like gallery grid 
is down in here. Those parts structurally of this, so probably from about there to there to uh, probably the rote, the the Iron Ajax, to be perfectly honest. So from the HTML side of this, everything except for these ones, these are like more advanced ones going forward. So I can, I can copy a huge chunk of this, uh, of the templated area. All right, close that. I go back to my LRN app CIS. We're gonna take that paper button, we're gonna kill it. Uh, we're actually gonna kill this whole stinking templates thing. Okay, then we're gonna kill these ones. We don't use those anymore. Uh, paper toast, you know, it'd be good to give some feedback about what people are doing as they click through, especially if you start to get into Ajax saving. Uh, gallery card, we already said we're not gonna call it that. So this is gonna be uh, LRN app CIS course card. And so one thing I have to do is start renaming LRN app CIS course card. Okay. Take that course card. Um, this requires materialize CSS, so let's start to put our imports in place. Uh, materialize CSS styles is actually its own import, so that you get those styles there. Uh, paper card, another one. So I can do paper card. Okay, I got paper card in place. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, iron icon is required for this to work. Iron image is required for this to work. Um, LRN Design Avatar, we're going to drop, maybe, oh, actually, you know what? I might keep LRN Design Avatar, to be perfectly honest. Um, that uh, helps visualize either a picture of something or like a person's name. Um, and so it might be, that might be kind of cool. Um, in, in Elms, we actually use that right here. This is a, a J, Jdenticon, I think is how you pronounce it. It's like a JavaScript-based identity icon type of thing. And it's a hash of a value coming into it to do that. So um, actually, if I inspect that, we can see that's the case. Uh, there we go. LRN design avatar label sync 100 J Tenticon. So let's copy that. Um, and part of this is, you know, part of why I'm even bothering to do this and record it is um, it's important to illustrate that like once you get down this rabbit hole, and we'll call the rabbit hole in this case, um, uh, headless development of, you know, with a CMS or polymer based development and web components more generally, you can just start stealing things from yourself all over the place. Uh, it's pretty stinking awesome. So, you know, I make this avatar once and I do it in such a way that now it becomes a reusable visual asset. Well, now as I build higher and higher order applications, I can start stealing other things from myself. Um, so let's get rid of the comments aspect. It's not going to have comments. It's not going to have author implication. Um, we'll say right side. And this will say left side. Uh, just to have it there. Again, we're in the actions of that. Um, okay, there's all our properties. So we're not, oh, this is on gal uh, the gallery card. So another thing when you rename one element to another, I need to copy that. The reason uh, this part at least gets a little polymer specific, the reason that this is separate and that you have to define it twice on the polymer object here and on the HTML is um, when you, it's part of build process, you can um, rip that out, put it somewhere else. Um, and so you could have your CSS delivered separately, or sorry, uh, CSS and HTML delivered separately from your JavaScript. Uh, for what we're doing, it's not super important, but, um, there are instances where that is, is important to do um, uh, from like an app packaging standpoint or if you're going to do a, um, a browser plugin, uh, it's, that becomes important. Uh, project icon, there we go, there's project icon, uh, which is the icon to show in the event that the image isn't there. And so that is something you know, we don't want the word project, we'll say course icon. That's something of like a fallback. Um, so, uh, let's search for now project icon, right? So I am doing quite a bit of renaming of these things, um, uh, but I am able to completely repurpose this item that was made, uh, because of the, the work that was put in previously. Now we have some other elements that are even more generic, you know, uh, paper card is actually one of those that's by Google. Um, 
so that you can build things like this. I still like to build little elements that kind of contain that information. Um, mostly, let's see, oh good, so it's support for different sizes. Mostly just uh, for event retargeting even, so that like your event listeners are specific to the item and then you can put the item down you know, 50 times as opposed to having to iterate through a list and attempt to apply each time. So uh, just web components in general even is really good for scoping in that regard. Um, another thing I constantly do, you see I just copy and paste. Um, this is where I just want like a voice space thing that says, hey, build me the whole stinking thing I want. Um, and honestly, with this approach, you're probably not too far from it. Okay. Uh, present a course card. There we go. Uh, get rid of that demo link. It's not going to have a demo. And space those in just to do it. Okay. So polymer material, CSS, paper card is up there, iron image, iron icon. Eleanor Design Avatar, we're going to need a reference to. Uh, the other nice thing with uh, resource deduping, if you will, um, is that I don't need to include the dependencies of LRN Design Avatar. Uh, they're just going to happen. Uh, now, something I do need to adjust, and let's, okay, where we sprung out of that was off of this little card here. So we're going to, oops, it's not Avatar. That's our hyphen size course card. Um, that plugin, if you're not familiar with it, is um, Alfred app, and it has a paste queue, and it's a stinking lifesaver as far as I'm concerned. Um, okay, so date, we're not necessarily going to care about here. Uh, we're, this FERPA protect thing is something super specific to Elms. We'll get rid of that. Image, icon, comments, we're not going to have a connotation of. Author, we're not going to have a connotation. I mean, we could, but for what we're doing right now, we won't. Um, gallery card wrapper. Okay, so what I was about to say is, um, we'll see the path resolution here for deduping to look this up. It's actually nested in Bower components. So this is a subtle difference between apps and, uh, and other things, uh, elements, is um, that you need to account for account for that fact. So it's not difficult, but you need to make sure that these resolve to the same, you know, iron icon reference resolves to the same iron icon reference within elements elsewhere. Uh, so all of these things are built in a vacuum uh, so that you can, you know, stamp them out and know, kind of know where everybody is, but they are at the moment still dependent upon like, hey, I'm looking for things in Bower underscore components directory. So that then on the front end, when you use these in a larger application, they all resolve to the same location. Uh, Iron Ajax, the greatest thing ever made. Okay. I'm going to need a couple of different things here. Uh, app route, we're not going to mess with right now. Um, but we'll include it. We'll, we'll, we're not going to mess with route and location right now, but I'll at least include them. Elmzilla and loading is our little loading icon when things are load, booting up. App toolbars, import and iron selector. There's a lot of elements in here. Eleron says button. And so I copy these. Oh, geez, paper drop down, paper list box, paper item. See, you can use elements and elements and elements and elements and elements, um, which is a good and a bad thing. Um, on the good side, obviously, is repurposing this stuff. On the bad side is, um, you know, just you get deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. Okay. Uh, paper toast. Did that twice this box. This box, drop down item. Item. Paper button. I don't know. Paper button I have. Ellerin sys button I didn't have. And uh, app toolbar. Iron selector. <laughs> um, app route. An application, I think the last one. Good, application. So in all that, I only duplicated two of those, not bad. Um, okay, paste, 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 paste. And so this is all, you know, I'm just trying to get my dependencies in place. And for a lot of these, I already know where they live, right? So this just comes with the experience of having built a whole bunch of these. Um, you get used to it over time. Our list, uh, there's no rule Rhyme or reason to how you structure these. I know that iron elements are lower in the periodic table, so to speak, of web components than like paper. 
I also know that the same group of developers made those, so I kind of try to keep them together. There's no hard and fast rule about that. That's uh, mostly just my own personal preference so that I can read and go polymer iron paper sort of deal. Uh, I'll learn this button as another example. That's one I know I made. So then things that I know that I made, I kind of uh, separate a bit. Uh, okay. And then app toolbar, I believe is from app layout. Um, and so app toolbar, I am going to have to look at the structure of. Uh, that is in app layout, app toolbar, app toolbar. So there's a little bit different structure to that. I only know that because I've done these a bunch. Um, app route is separate. Um, and you see, I'm also, I end up basically stacking these uh, up based on complexity as well. So like app is more complex than item uh, as an example. And so that's app route. That doesn't help with, you know, it's not required. It's, it's not super important, but um, I have found it to be useful at times. Uh, okay, app route application. Nice iron selector still needs to get in there. Paste that on there. Copy, paste. Okay, just take the word selector, 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 selector. Okay. We got that. Now, let's make sure we actually have all those dependencies. Um, a lot of these are going to exist just because of our initial tooling. Um, but normally you would do bower install dash save. And I know that LRN web whoop, components, and here's part of where the stacking can be useful. Um, if you know you're going from complex to less complex, if you do bower in, uh, bower require, you know, bower installs that require these hot things lower here, then it's going to start to get a lot more of these other things automatically. Um, again, you don't have to do it that way, but. Okay, so I can see, hey, this requires paper button. Now I know I don't need to ask for paper button. I don't need to ask for paper styles. Um, however, paper styles is a good one to include because a lot of stuff depends on it. Paper styles, there we go, paper styles, paper styles, cool. Um, I know that I need app route. Um, now this just comes from knowing Polymer. These elements come from the Polymer team. Polymer elements app route. Get those, iron location, cool. Uh, application, actually I don't even need to have done that because I just got it. No, there's not one called application. That would be part of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's iron, yeah, iron. Or no, it's application. That's what I just plug, plugged in. Or maybe it's iron location. I do call app location. Hmm. Maybe it's part of app route. Um, Let's see, app route, ah, oh, yeah, it is. Application is in app route, okay, cool. So, I'm gonna do that, that'll point to the right place. Let's make sure we have these other ones in here. Again, those are from the Polymer team. So I can do paper item, paper dropdown menu. Okay, let's do paper list box and paper button just to be safe. Paper button. Yep, do option three. The, da, da, da. Okay, paper list box. Cool. Uh, paper styles, I know I have paper toast. That would not be a normal one. Mm, toast. Okay, toast is in place. I'll get down into iron selector. And iron list and iron pages and iron Ajax go uh, list pages Ajax and that one I probably already have yep two okay so I should have should <laughs> have all of those dependencies now uh, in place um, I do still need LRN design avatar because I need the dependencies for this other one. Um, because I'm going to use it. Color and Design Avatar. Whoops, that is, you know, you can see right there, that was not one that was produced by Polymer Elements team because these relate to GitHub repos. Okay, so that was by our team. All right, now we've got that in place. Uh, iron Icon and Iron Icons we're going to need. That one is by Polymer. Get Iron Icon. Three and iron icons. Uh, 
Okay, three, which I could have done iron icons, which would get me iron icon, obviously. The two don't work. Mutually exclusive. Iron image. And what a lot of these are doing, you know, it's it's some preloading of things. It's um, handling large lists of items automatically in a in a sustainable way. It's creating pagers between lists of resources. Okay. All right, and that is uh, something we made. It's materialized CSS styles, which just give you like access to write the word red uh, light and five, uh, which is a convention for materialized CSS, uh, which then relates to Google color codes. All right, so we've got Ellerin app CIS course card. Got that saved. Save on this side. Um, our dependencies are in place. I don't expect this to exactly work. Obviously, we have to get data from somewhere, but um, it should at least start to maybe look like it's going to do something. It's not going to say hello world, let's put it that way. So where is our hello world? There we go. So at least something, right? And it kind of looks like, right, because I, I ripped it from, uh, for, oh, there was studio, right? So it's got some of the initial classes and structures and things to just start to behave that way. Let's see loading. Uh, I don't see my little loading Network Snowflake, and that's because I didn't get it. So, can do Elms LN loading, and that's a a little spinning loader that we have. Okay, support for paper tooltips. Oh, it's really making me re-up some of these dependencies that were already there. Okay. Um, Loading, Amazon, oh, well, yeah, I didn't include it, so it doesn't know what it is. So uh, that's a common, a common error on my part. Um, so I'm going to take that, and now we have to actually include it as a reference in the page, other than just getting the dependency, and there we go. Now we get the little snowflake of a certain size, uh, which will act as our loading icon. Okay. Um, now, I don't need things like project board, obviously, so we can start gutting parts of this, right? That says project board. We can take out the project board assignment and table views. In that case, we probably don't even need the iron selector aspect of this. All right, delete. And now we get rid of all those. It is nice to have that across there. Now, obviously not in amber. That looks horrible. What were you thinking, me? Okay, so now it's white. Um, and then we have author, project, and assignment. Now, those aren't going to be filters that make sense necessarily, right? That's going to be um, something we'll have to change. So uh, let's get rid of assignments for now. And we'll just change this to like course, courses, uh, original submissions is not going to be a thing. And this is supposed to say displaying blah courses of blah courses. So let's do like an original courses dot length versus courses dot length. Um, that way we can communicate, you know, once filtering that there are other things involved. Uh, project is not something that, that comes into play here. Um, and of course, of course, course, query param uh, dot author. This is actually going to be course and to array courses as course, course dot name, course dot, uh, we'll say machine name, because I know that's a value that underlies that. Um, and then course and project. So instead of course, um, let's, let's look for a convention, right? We're starting to kind of wire to our data model in this way. Uh, so let's do, um, maybe academic home or program. Program is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, program. Okay. So let's do program and programs. Okay. Query parameter program. Programs. This will start to make sense when we do the data wiring in a bit. Program. And then we're going to have program dot title or name. Actually, let's stick with name. Name of the program and program dot. Uh, 
uh, machine name. Now let's see if programs actually have a machine name when we go and make them. And we can look in our data model program. Okay. And let's look at, whoops, not people, but academic unit. Okay, so a program has a title and an abbreviation. And maybe the abbreviation is the thing that we want instead of machine name. Um, for just just for selecting um, when we build out a selection for this. Um, so let's do program and then let's also do one ahead of time for academic home. Uh, academic home. Homes. <laughs> See I've got this plural here. Um, academics. Let's just do academics. Academics. And then this is query.academic, and this is academics, and this is as academic, academic dot. Uh, let's look for what those have. So they have a name and abbreviation as well. So let's do abbreviation for that, and then we can do academic dot name. In this case, we're doing name in the place of you know what might traditionally on a Drupal site be title. Um, so you can kind of, you know, as we get more and more headless with this stuff, switching to Polymer, those things on the UI mean less and less. Um, okay, so academics, 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 cool. So now we've got academics in place. Now this won't do anything. Obviously it's not wired anything yet, but now we get three of these little drop downs. Um, so we have query params that this is pulling from. We also have gallery. We're gallery all over the stinking place. And we have submissions all over the place. So this is going to be submissions, it's going to be courses, courses, courses. Um, okay, submission URL, don't care about that part. So this is kind of buttonizing, if you will, the LRN app CIS course card. Uh, that's something that we had from the studio where the cards could actually be there and be uh, used in a completely different way than intended. Um, you know, we only have one page in this case. Um, I'm not, I don't even really know that we need the pages part. Um, but I, maybe I'll just leave it there for now. If we were to expand this to start encompassing other things, that would make more sense, I think. Um, course card wrapper. Now let's go around and courses grid. Okay, trying to stick with the same type of nomenclature, course card wrapper. Um, that is our CIS course card, so the gallery card. And this is Courses grid, okay, where gallery doesn't show up anywhere else. Yay, okay, save. All right, again, still no data because we're not talking to anything. Um, okay, routing, table in place, programs. We've got a card theoretically. Now a card right now, let's look at, you know, how we would start to wire this up to stuff, right? So uh, let's take our demo index and the index doesn't point to anything it just says hey LRN app CIS but if you look in LRN app CIS there's an iron ajax tag and the iron ajax tag is basically going to say anytime something adjusts with my uh, request path or parameters but we're not wiring to that just yet um, then display stuff so if we give it a source path that's already predefined uh, JSON like if I wrote source hyphen path equals uh, demo.json. Now I can craft a JSON file in here that is going to do uh, kind of model my output. So I can do, uh, I can look at this and say source path. Okay, so once there's a source path, it's going to request stuff and it's going to handle that response. So I'm going to need to um, do something. I don't, know, I don't want the word studio in there anymore. Um, it's not going to be studio response. It's going to be uh, courses response, okay, or CIS response is actually probably better because that's what Studio equated to. So I don't have any of the properties copied over yet. Um, I don't think I copied, oh, I did copy that at one time. Okay, so let's steal that from our other element. This is our properties block. Um, block cycle, okay, there's nothing for that. Uh, although, uh, and this is a convention I also use, this, the underscore here is kind of implying this is an internal, uh, it's, it's not actually enforcing that, but it's kind of implying it's an internal call, so no one should do anything with it. Um, 
now I'm going to have to go back through and look for submissions. This is going to be courses. Courses, studio response is going to be CIS response. Look for the word studio. Uh, again, in my little documentation, what little there is. CIS, okay, original submissions is actually in the original courses. Copy paste, so I can bounce between those. Projects is no longer projects. Uh, projects, assignments, and authors, right? Those got changed. So this is academics. This one um, was programs and courses, if I recall correctly, because we want to be able to filter or yeah, filter by course name type of a deal. And that's in our right there, okay. And then it's in the query params, uh, so that you can append something into the query param to basically force force it to say, hey, show me all of the fill in the blank. Um, okay, active. I want to get rid of the word submission everywhere. Yeah, data submission. So this is data course ID. Data course ID. Uh, that has to do with click resolution. So when you click, and if the focus was actually in the card versus the button wrapping the card, I want it to bubble the same ID. Uh, that was lazy at the time. Uh, load course URL. That's ultimately not what we would do, but just to do it, sure. Uh, original courses. Something else I found from making this originally uh, courses compute um, is when you have a filterable list, it's nice to have the original list held in a kind of a sidecar and then have the users actually interfacing with another modified list. That way you don't have to go back and request more data, you know, just because they manipulated what they were viewing at the time. Source path for data. Endpoint for data. Do I do anything with endpoint? Yeah. So endpoint has to do with where we are currently. Um, that becomes later important when it comes to routing and things. It's not super important right now. Base path, active submission. I've almost got the word submission gone. And then, yay, clicked active slash click the course. Okay, active course. Okay, so we've, we've kind of refactored out, and now I don't have the functions, obviously. We'll need to grab some of those. Um, refactored out a lot of this stuff. Um, let's do search for that. We'll see the only function, yeah, the only, well, one of the only functions is that. Um, there's also an on tap event for load course URL. And to array is something we have built in. And handle response. So those are the three functions we're going to need anything for. Handle response, load course URL, and course compute. And so course compute is going to be a function in which we're going to compute what the list of courses is currently. Now I'm going to kind of snag this from the work previously done on that LRN app Open Studio, um, and then we can kind of step through what the heck that's doing. So that was submissions compute, okay? And submissions compute is going to look at the original submissions, right? So I mentioned that that listing of things that we have kind of off on the side. And then it's going to step through and it's going to filter it back out. Um, this is running um, an ES6 filter and saying if the author, you know, is setting the query parameters in the header, then we need to make sure that we filter out things that aren't that author, basically. It's, it's a way of targeting the machine names of what's selected and seeing if they match the data that came across. So I can take that function and just dump it right in here. And then that function had submissions. And so this is original courses. We'll see where that becomes important uh, soon. Course instead of submission, course, course course, relationship, course ID, right? So that has to do with the data on the back end because some of this is going to end up being back end data modeling as well, obviously. Um, now I got to match this to my filters that we have. And so my filters are academics, programs, and courses. And so we need to do academics. And it wasn't ID um, before. It was abbreviation, I believe. But uh, we'll look at that in a second. And pro, whoops. Programs, okay, academics, programs, and uh, courses, Whoop. course. Um, and that actually isn't 
this in. This is going to be you know, just for a name, I guess. Um, this is going to be course dot name. It's going to be the actual course that we're, we're looping through. Um, I didn't have that as an original a thing in the other one. Um, even just as you as you you know, if you're watching, start to build this out, you can probably see the advantages of having a Drupal, you know, a Drupal or CMS type solution, something that has pagers or views or something that you pull from the back end and it just, you know, builds. I'm, I'm building by hand, you know, input filtering mechanisms and feeding their data headlessly. Uh, a CMS is just going to give you all of those things together. So another, another little thing uh, associated with this is, um, you see this query select iron list. This is going to ensure that once the information is filtered, that it's going to fire an event to uh, a thing managing all the, the data being displayed to, uh, to filter itself. Um, that's an important point with iron list specifically because iron list is doing something crazy that basically uh, allows the DOM to have, it allows the DOM to have only like 20 items seen at any time, even though there's several hundred potentially. Um, and scale without you know crippling the, the end user's machine so that you can just make a single request for data but it's only actually painting to the screen the things it should. In that event though, when you change what should be visible, then you're gonna have to potentially update it and say, hey, the things have changed just to be safe. Um, compute the active list of courses. Okay, so that's gonna give me filtered courses and that's gonna come out of this as filtered Courses, not like that. Okay, so this is an array from the original. So whatever was passed in. So we need to have original courses there. Um, and then if I look at the original function this is from, that also has query params. And the query params is um, the global value, right? Query params. So what a computed value in Polymer is, is it lets you take uh, other properties and says, when these change, you need to figure out what the heck is in here again. Um, I'm going to take out these notifies. I used to be a little over the top with my notify statements because I thought you had to uh, in order for it to work. And so that's not super important that those things notify. It's more important that you uh, do something meaningful with what's there. So, okay, um, I've got this worked out quite a bit. Um, paper drop down menu and all of that in place. Um, now we need to actually get it some, some semi-meaningful data um, as well as do something with those clicks, right? So if we do uh, load course or load submission URL, uh, we can see that what that did in our original thing is this normalizes uh, a click event. The Polymer normalizer function right there, you see polymer.dom.e, you do local target. Um, that helps figure out what the person actually clicked on versus, you know, the DOM element that, that emitted it. So like if I click on uh, a span that lives within this, it would help normalize that this is the thing that actually emitted the event as opposed to the span that I clicked on. Now you can, you can use this normalize function to figure out both. Basically the local target and there's a remote target. Um, would help you understand which thing you actually clicked on, whether it was the paper button up, up above it or it was the thing itself. Um, in this case, it's forcing a redirect to a certain path. Um, and as a, this allows, this is kind of our Band-Aid, right? So this is where we get into kind of a hybrid app as opposed to a full, full on headless. Um, and that was mostly because of time constraints when building that previously. Um, but Let's see what handling response is. Whoops, handling response, okay. So handle response for the whole project. So whenever the information comes across, it's basically gonna filter all of this stuff. Um, there's also you know, submissions, oh, that has to do with routing, I'm not touching that right now. Um, handle response for the whole project, okay. So instead of handle response, paste that in there. We don't have these for the whole courses object. Authors. Is going to be courses assignments is going to be uh, programs, and then we have uh, academics. Okay, for academic areas. All right, an assignment is going to be in this case program. So then whenever I see assignment, we're going to do program, 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 
this is implying certain knowledge of the data model that I'm going to be getting. You see, I have this uh, this root. I don't use that convention personally anymore. Let's do just this. Okay, uh, root. Nice. So this is going to say um, effectively what what I'm doing is pushing data that came over the wire into these two these three buckets now because um, we're going to do courses. Um, and we're going to push that on there based on what we found. It's, it's taking the information that comes across in the JSON request, and it's actually going to push it into three individual buckets so that we can form those listings of courses, programs, and academics. Um, so figure out courses, programs, and academics. This is slightly different from, you know, if I were to request on the back end and say, hey, how many academic homes do we have? Well, we might have six academic homes, but if the data I sent you only has references to four of them, I don't even need to bother presenting them. Um, now, that's a personal preference. You might want to present things that would return null, null data cases, but I don't um, in this instance. Uh, submissions is courses, projects in this case is academics. Okay, academics, uh, and it's not going to be studio response anymore. This is now CIS response, CIS response. It's not submissions, it's courses, courses, and assignments got changed to the word programs, programs, programs. Okay, program, project was, or is, whoops, is it just singular? Okay, project is course. And so, whoops, that's going to be course. Courses instead of programs there. Courses dot name. Mm, course, yeah, course ID relationship. And this isn't going to be that for course. This is just going to be dot name because of what came across. It's not going to be submissions, it's going to be courses. Okay. Submissions dot length. Courses submission. Courses. Okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> it's a lot of setup work. Course ID, submission, current course. Okay. Correct course URL. Uh, basically, I'm trying to set up for you click on the card and it goes to the place in in the CIS for that course. Now, that's I'm not going to do the entire thing in this as we're pushing an hour right now. Um, but, okay, submissions is courses, course response data, or CIS response data, submission, assignments, ah, so there's assignment, okay, so then we're going to do courses, it's not going to be authors, it's going to be courses, programs, and academics, okay, temporary academics, push on to academics, and then we got academics, academics, courses, Courses. And this is for these lists, right? Um, courses, courses, academics, academics, and then the other listing is programs. It gets programs, and that's the author. It's programs, and that's courses, and that's academics. And so academics doesn't have these other two aspects here. So we need to do programs, which gets program dot id, and this gets. Temporary courses dot, oh, maybe that's what it means, it's dot name. And these are ID, and this isn't programs now, it's academic. Okay, academic, academic goes there, and academic is a relationship of the academic home. So the data that's coming across basically is gonna be about courses. And so I'm gonna look at whatever came across, and I'm going to, let's get rid of author. Um, I'm going to uh, take that information that came across, and I'm going to say, uh, oh, I want data off of that. I probably um, okay. I'm going to say that uh, the courses came across. We're going to build a new list of just you know what is this course? Well, this course is course, okay. And then that way I can access course.name and we can associate it in our courses object so that you'll be able to basically take the data that came across and say, uh, give me course, and this actually should be machine name because I want it to be a unique value. Um, I want to find course, you know, machine name, 
thing underscore and underscore stuff and have that relate correctly uh, to the course in question. So I want the whole course object to be stored off of this courses, courses dot whatever equals the course. Course just came from this index. So I'm basically remapping, in this case, indexes to machine names for that one. Now, programs and academ academics um, is going to come from academic.id, and that's going to equal academic. So uh, this other information is actually relational off of the course. So the list of courses is going to come across, and a course is part of a program, and it's part of an academic home. Well, I'm going to hit that information associated with the academic home and the program, and then we're going to build other arrays of information that list all the programs that came across, all the academic homes that came across, is effectively what's, what's happening there. Um, then we're going to take that information that we built, because this is local to this function, and we're going to push it into an array of items. And then we're going to go through and we're going to set those to the globals. And we're going to disable that hidden loading thing. Um, so again, there, there shouldn't be any information. Um, but we're getting you know one step closer to building our, our little thing. Now if we do inspect network no XHR happened yet. Good. Okay, so we go to this we have demo.json. I'm gonna hit save because that's source path now. And this is not valid JSON. So we're gonna say courses and courses is an array. Um, linter thing there. Uh, can I just say it's an empty array? No, it doesn't seem to like that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. This is the other thing I do. I'll copy this information and we're going to paste it into uh, jsonlint.com. Validate. There we go. That's valid. JSON. I don't know what that's complaining about. One less thing it's complaining about. There we go. <laughs> it's complaining about spaces. It was actually valid. Um, so now I will go back to, let's not do studio uh, at the moment. Let's do this. Okay. Inspect. Console.log. Network. Hmm. Still not seeing. Uh, recall go out for demo.data. Let's make sure it's in there. No, it's not. All right. Maybe I'm updating this in the wrong place. Oh, I am. It's not in demo. It's, I see, it's in here. Okay. Um, so, that's fine. Um, we're going to take this. I updated the wrong file in that, that little demo area. Okay. So, we'll take this and we're going to point instead to index.html, source path, source path demo slash demo.json. That's probably cleaner that way anyway. Oops, close the tag. Okay. Now, oh good, an error, good. Cannot reproperty courses of undefined, but you see now we have an XHR that went out and it just got nothing, right? <laughs> um, so let's see what it was expecting the, the data object to be. Um, and this kind of starts to become like a back and forth, you know, as, to, as far as where you start here. So it's looking for data to be in something called data, shocking. Okay, so what I would probably do off of this is we're going to do data and we're going to build out a data object. Okay, courses is going to be in there. So let's set tab size to two so my JSON linter doesn't get mad in a little bit. Okay, there we go, courses. Um, and then in courses, we have an array of items or yeah, an array of items. And then in that is an object and this object is going to have a machine name in this case. Um, and if we look through for where the other side is expecting machine name to show up, it should just be on the course itself. And courses came through, and courses was off of the word data. Now this is also claiming academics could be its own, uh, you know, tower of information, so to speak. Here, um, I don't know that I want to do it that way, to be perfectly honest. Um, so let's let's get rid of, get rid of those. Um, we're going to set original courses there, okay, author, assignment, uh, project, make sure project, ah, there's project still, and author, <laughs> courses, programs, oh, 
course program and author just oh so it's not author it's academics and then academic right there we go so that those variables are set ahead of time uh, let's go and do now in our demo it's expecting a machine name off of the course so this machine name that we're making it's fake data uh, it's another thing that's nice about structuring things this way is you can kind of build it without having the back end and then start to give that specification to people on the back end and say hey I need stuff that's wired this way so we have relationships um, so a course is going to have a machine name it's it's going to have an ID of some kind right so we'll say it's one uh, it's going to have a name and the name is going to be singularity 100 okay and then it's going to have a title uh, intro to the singularity okay put that on there and then another this is a convention uh, that we have from the past is this is going to have relationships to other entities of data so to speak and so the relationships is going to be an object and the relationships is going to have data and so we see we have relationships.program.data in this case so the relationship is the uh, not data it's going to be program and then I want to learn about the data of the program this is associated to. So this would also start to give, you know, I could do this, right? And this is, sorry, not an ID with an array. This might be a thing with an ID of two. This is ID of one. Um, now we've got these relationships that we're building out for, a, hey, there's a relationship to a program. Well, program is going to have to have um, probably a name, right, to be to be visualized in some meaningful way. Well, in those drop downs, we had name and we had abbreviation. Um, now I'm going to map those. I don't care if it's an abbreviation. Make that machine name, and this starts to get into, or actually, you know, screw it. It'll just be ID. Um, that's probably the safest of all of these. Um, ID, 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 ID. <laughs> and so now, when we're um, when we're modeling the information in here, you know, if I make sure everything has an ID, and if it's going to make, it's going to look for program, and the relationship of program, and then it's going to look for academic, right? Which I know maps to academic home, and that ID is three. Uh, then in here we can start to put things like title, or sorry, name, and now we're we're forming the name of the academic home. Uh, so arts and letters. Um, and then in the program, the name is uh, Digital Multimedia Design. Um, now, because this is JSON, I can, wow, I actually wrote correct JSON out the first time. That's ridiculous. Um, I can add to this. Um, so we'll do status 200. This would be something like what you would probably see from a web service that you know, we've got status 200 to 200 code, meaning it was successful connection. I've got data, and then in the data, I've got courses that come across, and courses have machine names, names, titles. Um, now, to normalize with this other data model that I was uh, proposing here, let's do data, right? So it's data about this course, so that it's kind of a reference just to the entity, the object, if you will, on the other side. And so it's, um, there we go. Okay, so this course, we have a course in this array, and its ID is one, its machine name is Sing100, its name is, you know, then this steps into the data, um, its name is Singularity100, its title is this, and we're going to say image, because uh, part of this is try to form, you know, what those, those banners are, effectively. Um, if we take our demo area here, and then we'll take our, one of those banners from before, you know, we can start mocking up a whole slew of information. Now, uh, I'm going to want probably a full a full path just to make life easier. So I'm going to say I'm going to actually copy and paste this address in here for my image. Probably, you know, obviously you're not going to do this in a production area. Um, whoops. Okay, so it's going to be that, um, and then it goes to slash courses, which I think is interesting. Oh, look, it's already starting to. Certain things are starting to trigger. That's cool. You can see it's just playing zero of one, so it knows that there's even a thing back there to filter in the first place. That's awesome. Um, then we're going to go to demo 
and then uh, what's the name of this? Art history dot jpg. Okay, so that's the image that we're going to put in there, and then there it is. So that's going to be a reference to that. Uh, I could probably, you know, I could take this part of the address off for what I'll form for the images themselves. Okay, we've got these relationships to these other things with unique IDs off of them. Uh, let's now take this courses object and we're going to copy and paste it twice here. And now we'll make, you know, effectively another course. And so this is going to be, you know, ID of this course is going to be four, just so these don't overlap entirely. And then we'll make it have a different program, but it'll be in the same academic area. And we're going to call the program it's in general education. Okay. And it's not going to have the art history banner. We're going to do uh, we have a large banner. And we'll make this large. And this is landscape architecture to intro to landscape architecture. And then this is uh, large zero zero one. Okay, for its name, oh, it should be like that. Large zero zero one. This would be large zero zero one because it's a machine name versus a readable name. So now we refresh and we see, ala, it actually actually got rid of there. So now we have zero of two. It did the loading, and obviously. Now we need to graft to that data that we're forming. So now it's like we're making a fake backend and we can start debugging off of this information. So if I refresh, let's see, we have demo here. Okay, preview, data, courses. See, I can start to step down through this and I have something that I can base my application on now. Woohoo, that took forever. Um, you know, for comparison, I will say. So we're at the hour and six minute mark. Um, and this is me talking through this process. This, what I am showing currently would have been weeks worth of effort uh, previously on the part of, of even me doing this. Um, and now I'm reducing it to being able to explain what I'm doing in real time to an hour, uh, even to get to this point. And when we're at this point right here, we're oddly getting pretty close to done, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, we're not, but... Um, so let's take these, you know, as item, we're going to call this course instead. <clears throat> so now we can start messing with the thing that we have here. Um, now I, the other nice, uh, cool thing, I know this data is different, right? So, uh, it's got, you know, course ID there. It knows it can wire that in. However, uh, there's no thing called title here, right? So now I can kind of go back to my data that I'm matching and I can say, well, if I'm in this object, as far as what I'm mapping to, I've got to go into data.name for the thing I really want. And so I can go into, let's close that open studio one. I don't want that anymore. Okay. Um, I can go into data. So it's course.data.name. And then we're going to call that name because that's just easier to do. And then you know, instead of title here, it's going to be name, and then here it's going to be name, because name and title are two different things in what we're doing. And then we'll rename this to name. And, name. and instead of project, in this case, it's going to be course. Okay, so we have just in there again, I do too many notifies. Let's take those out. Reflect attribute is useful at times. Um, it's not super critical, um, and especially in these cases, I don't actually think it is because these are these are going to get changed up above. They're not going to get changed internally. Um, uh, however, elevation will. So elevation actually should be because as you mouse over these cards that we're making, they'll kind of appear to be at a higher elevation than they actually are. So yeah, that, uh, let's leave that. Um, icon, I don't care about that one. Okay, so got those in place. You see we have course.name gets wired to what should be the thing to generate our little jdenticon, which we have on here. Uh, we're going to say that it's gray, dark, and four. Now another fun thing I could do, I could say, well, let's have a color value. And so now um, 
we'll add a property for color. And this has been, you know, come up in another part of the issue queue. Uh, color of the course item. And like, what if we had a primary color that you could select for your course? And then we started to apply that uh, throughout the entire course experience name of the course in question, and maybe our default color is the thing we saw before, or it's gray, right? Um, okay, so we've got those in place. Um, I like to doc block document things. Uh, increase elevation while hovering. So now another thing I can do in this, I know from, the, uh, from using paper card, that if the elevation is higher than five, it won't work. So what I could do is say if this dot elevation uh, plus two is greater than five, this dot elevation equals five. And then something else I could do in this regard. Um, I could do a, before I set this at all, I could do a this dot old elevation equals this dot elevation. And now I've basically, and I'll do a double underscore. There's nothing saying this is a convention. You know, this is just kind of a way that I like to program. Um, I could effectively say, create a temporary holding bin for, here, oh, there we go. Uh, create a temporary holding bin for the elevation variable called old elevation. And so now this is set on the object while I'm in the process of mousing onto something, okay? And I'm making sure that it's not gonna be greater than five, so it's max is five, uh, and I know what the old elevation was. And now, instead of this, which could have had flawed logic, now whenever we leave the card, we're going to set the elevation equal to the old elevation. And so it's it's like a semi glow you know, it's, it's not global, right, but this, this value is um, attached and available and known now on the object in question, which the object could be one of those 20 cards that I'm gonna stamp onto the interface. Uh, so I just dynamically made this value. You're not gonna be able to set it, right? Um, if it's a property, you would be able to jump in and do, you know, a, do an underscore underscore old hyphen elevation and access this value. But because I put it here only, you won't be able to mess with the old elevation. Um, so this is kind of a way we can protect end users from breaking certain visual aspects of the application. Uh, reset the elevation. Okay, so old elevation, make sure it's a legitimate value, add it in, add it to depth value if it's not the five. This still gives people the flexibility to add whatever the heck they want to the elevation. But if this value is five, it won't break anything. Okay, so we've got elevation reflected because it does change. Um, now we've got a color value that we added in and we said color is gray. Now let's do color and name and icon and image and all those good ones in LRN app here. So we've got elevation is two, that's what I pass in for the height of these things by default. We've got an ID for some internal logic. We've got name, which is course.data.name, right? Course data name. I need a color now because I'm supporting one. So let's do color in this case. And color for this one is, uh, we'll say blue. Now I'll probably, this would probably, we would want to do like a FF0000 sort of style, but for the purposes of this right now, I'm just going to do blue because we're mocking up information. We're not even actually storing this yet um, in Elms to have access to this color property, but it's come up so many times that I'm, we're going to add the field to it. It, it only makes sense. Um, so blue, and we'll say that this one is green, so we can see what the difference would be on the output side. Okay, so now we've got a title and we've got a name, we've got an image, color. There was support for an icon, but because we have an image, we're just gonna roll with that instead. So we're not going to use icon here. Uh, I'm just not gonna pass it down because we, I'm not using that yet. That's, you know, once we would get to a scenario where someone didn't submit an image, but even then I might just use an image that's like the default image value type of a thing. Um, so we got name, let's do color. And now this isn't dot image, it's course dot data dot image. Let's wire up color, whoops. Okay, and color is gonna end up being course dot data dot color. Uh, okay, that the doubles implies one way data binding. 
okay and then we've got the paper button Cool, so now we are at this point assuming that this card will render correctly if it actually ends up getting sent some legitimate data. Now let's make sure we can send it legitimate data is the other aspect. Um, so let's go and we clearly need to do some work down in this handling the response data. So for starters, let's look at what this claims to be your console log of courses okay and let's reload this so there's our demo.json we can see the data that came across there nice um, we can see all the other requests we hit console ah there we go we can see that it did correctly load in there so it did zero and one then um, we see programs is not defined so we have an error in our code here but it doesn't happen until 281. It doesn't happen until all the way towards the end. That's awesome. Um, so it's the fact that there isn't a programs. Well, see, there is programs on here. But it's claiming programs is not defined ahead of time. Hmm. Okay. Programs, academics. Ah, there we go. Right there. So program, programs. And it would do the same thing uh, with courses, but courses get set there. And program is not an array or an object. It's, it's an array of values. <gasps> oh, we're getting somewhere, <laughs> right? So now I've got my card. And when I click the card, it does the action in question. Uh, I can see something is going on with courses, right? We're getting close there. Academic home, getting close there. Um, and this isn't going to be courses. This has to be like courses filter or something. Um, because we don't want to mess with the, well, yeah, maybe we do actually. Um, so this is courses. Let's see what's in the filters to get that information to show up. So it's not academic.name, right? It's academic.data.name and program.data.name and even uh, course.data.name. There we go. So now we have our filter showing up at least for courses. So now we need to look at program and academic home to see what's going on there. Um, it's also not actually filtering it, right? See, so we need to do something about that too. Um, so I don't, I did some like machine name normalizing in here at some point, yeah, with this machine name. I don't really need to do that. I don't think that's useful to be perfectly honest. Um, the other thing is that this pulls in relationship and I, I think I just want the program and the academic thing to be keyed off of programs and academics. Um, so let's see about that. Oh, okay. Now we've got those values showing up there. Um, but you'll notice we actually duplicated values somewhere along the line here. So now that is something to look at. Um, but you can see we've now got this responsive list of cards, right? And it's pulling in the banner from, from someplace um, remote. And then it's, it's putting the banner on here. Uh, it's passing in and building a jdenticon. Um, so let's start to see, you know, mess with some style and design aspects of this. Okay, so into the card and we see we've got this big iron icon area that's not used at all. And so iron icon is actually, the iron icon is required effectively. And we can say, you know what? We're not actually gonna use this, this part. Um, this is another another trick that I was using here though, is hidden. So you could say, well, if icon didn't come across, right, and it doesn't have a default, yet, but let's say the value is false. There we go. That's another way of solving that. So that would imply the default value of icon is false. And so if icon is false, it would wire that there, it'll wire icon false, but it'll do hidden false. This allows you to not have to use um, uh, some some template logic in order to basically contextually remove that. So iron icon is still actually there, 
but it's wired. Um, HTML has a property native to element, all elements that are made that is, or sorry, an attribute, not property, uh, that's hidden. And so I then say the opposite of icon, which is this. So if icon was actually set to something, this would evaluate to false, and this would then display the icon in question. So it's a little, a little cheat you can use to accomplish that. Um, all right, so we've got that thing on there. Let's see if we don't do width 100, what happens? Oh, it goes away, okay. <laughs> um, so we do width 100, and we get these nice little cards stamped out. Now, why do we have them replicated is the next important question. And so we can, can look at that. Uh, the left and right side aspect, too, needs to be addressed. And so this should be like course.name and course.title maybe, right? And then uh, there's name, let's add support for title. Super hard to add these, right? <laughs> title of the course in question, title. Uh, name of the course like C100. Title of the course like intro to studies, right? So just so we have an idea. And then we'll say the default for that is nothing. The default for this is nothing. I don't want those to display anything if there's a problem. Um, let's go into our demo.json and just to prove that this could be yellow. And then let's take this item with ID four and we'll add some more. So we'll say that this is I will say this is seven, and that this one is six. Again, I'm just mocking up some fake data. Fake, fake 100, okay. And then this one is stuff, good old stuff 500. I'm an expert, this is, uh, you know, graduate level stuff. <laughs> All right, and that'll be uh, large. We'll make this blue or orange, and we'll make this one red, just so we start to get some variability in this stuff that's placed there. Okay, a bunch more cards, nice. All right, um, now we need to wire in title uh, to the card itself. So then when we're uh, template stamping this down, this needs to be copy paste, paste, and now it's not image, it's title and data.title. Okay, there we go. See, we got large 100 in there. Um, we need the name of the course to show up though. Card content, stuff 100, but the left side of the card. Hmm, okay, so let's look at that. Um, there's support for title now, or should be. And then, Oh, that's in the submission info area as opposed to card actions. Card actions is something different. That's good to know. Um, and this is also not dot name. It's title. Oh, that was silly. That was silly. <laughs> okay, that'll that will definitely improve things here. Um, so that's name, and then we're gonna say down there is just title. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we've got different. Uh, Jadenticons generating based on that name value, and they're a different color based on what the color should be. It's pretty cool. Um, in the case of those, I probably, I actually kind of want them up there, like overlaying the the image. I think that'll be neat, like to be more of more of a badge, or actually be more like on the line. Um, so let's take it out of there. That's in the card action section, and we're gonna put it. Um, just before so the submission info, um, and we're gonna do uh, we're gonna change submission info to be course info. Um, submission info is right there. Do course info. Um, oh, there's a little submission preview. Okay, I see that. Um, course preview or course. Sure, course preview area, okay. Submission, no longer there, nice. All right, now we're gonna take that LRN, oh, I don't have that tag name, LRN design avatar. All right, and we're gonna do, where was that? Um, 
next to course preview probably because it's the next thing in line. Learn design avatar. I will do a uh, margin like negative five em three zero zero or something. Um, it's a shift in absolute. Let's see what that does. Okay, see that pulled it way up there. Uh, we probably want it more like one em. It starts to get um, to be a question of do you want these in ems or or rems. Uh, I or or at all. Um, I, I actually I'm starting to kind of lean towards uh, using pixels again. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, um, just because some of these things, like you don't, know, if this is a repurposable element, you don't know the context is going to be used within necessarily. So you need to you need to be careful about that. Um, do a right zero. Let's see if I can get that to position there. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we've got this nice little course badge. Let's actually move it a negative. Right, down, left. Okay, let's move it um, away from this border uh, by, we'll say, 0.5 EMs. Okay, so now we've got a nice little design aspect that is going to be propagated elsewhere. Um, now let's take those card actions that we had. And this is not going to just be dot name. It's going to be title underneath it. And this will be the area that we leave around for buttons. We're not going to do text left, text right for those. Um, that'll be for our, our buttons to go and click to get more information, or maybe we pop up a modal or something. Um, do we have a dot name? Yes, we do have a dot name. So we can do dot name. We'll do a dot title. Make sure we don't have dot title repurpose anywhere. Good. Okay. And so we've got dot title, and we want the title to be slightly smaller than the name. So um, actually, let's do title as well off of that one and then the font size of that we're going to make 0.7 uh, em and the font weight we're going to make like 400 okay there we go so it's slightly smaller um, and now we've we've got kind of a, a nice little card forming here um, we're going to need to do something about that image a fixing part. We're going to need to do something about, oh, that's card actions. I see. Okay, card actions. I don't really have a need for card actions at the moment. If what we're attempting to do is get um, this on the screen. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's, let's take card actions and we'll just say it's hidden at the moment because we don't need those at the moment. There we go. So now I've got these cards that when I mouse over, they do that. If I tab to them, oh, I got a lot of other stuff on the UI. Maybe it's not triggering on tab. Oh, I don't think I did it to trigger it on tab. I'll have to do that for the mouse over to be on, on tab and make them focusable. Um, because there's no, is there a paper button there? Let's see. There is a paper button. I have an on tab event. For them, so I'll have to look into that um, from the accessibility perspective of that. You can see we get this nice little burst over top of it that I know exactly what I would be selecting, and you can see it tried to go somewhere, it didn't you know do anything successful. Um, you also see that courses jumps into the URL when I do this. That's routing going on, um, and you can see it updating and appending these additional values. That starts to get into routing as well. Now, I don't know that I have that doing anything meaningful um, because it doesn't have a context of what course is. Ah, there we go. That That is what I wanted to see, though. So if I do stuff 100, nice. See how when we refresh the page, it's still maintaining those values. So you could send someone to this address, and it would pre-populate those. And then once we get it wired up correctly, it'll trigger the cards to do that as well. So now you know I can see I have this nice responsive listing of cards, I have some half decent responsiveness on the um, on on this even. Um, these options are based on what data came across the wire. I've got some routing going on in this. Um, it's not perfect because it has you know the duplicate list. So let's see what's going on there. But it's getting it's getting pretty darn close. Um, so this is what's going on there. I'm actually pushing it onto the array twice, I believe. There we go. <laughs> so I changed the uh, connotation of that. Because uh, I'm not pushing onto that anymore. Now, how do we get it to do the filtering? Uh, I had this whole thing in place associated with filtering before. 
Um, base path, let's do base path has an initial value of just a backslash, just so that those paths would do something. Meaning, like if I click this, you see now it goes to slash node slash one. Um, that obviously would have a greater implication for you know our own like Drupal based application at that point. Um, but at least that it would do something. Um, endpoint for data, that's going to be where you're pushing stuff to. Um, and so the endpoint here, I, I don't have one of those just yet. You know, that starts to get in the weeds when we wire things even further for our application. Um, but let's look at the filtering. Here we go. Courses compute. And so how do we compute courses? Um, let's console.log of our courses compute. Okay, so we're gonna do original courses, which original courses is slightly different from the courses list itself, right? And so this is somehow going through and not applying filters appropriately. So let's see if we can figure out why. Um, so if the query param programs equals course dot relationships dot programs dot ID, right? So now we can look at the structure of our data that came across to see if it matches that. Refresh. Uh, courses. So if we're in one course, so from the context of this one, am I able to get to dot relationships, dot academics? No, it's, ac it's academic. Here we go. Dot program is dot program, right? Dot uh, academic dot ID. Yes, I can get to that now, but I couldn't before. So if the query param programs, and it should be program, okay, instead of those, because we're filtering out the individual thing, not all of them, query params. Let's see if that actually is what gets set. Yes, yeah, so you see it's program, and it's academic. So now it'll pick those up, because it'll notice that's what we selected. Um, let's see, we have query param course name. Well, there is no course name. It's course.data. Dot name equals that, but I don't want that. Remember, we stopped with the name convention, we went with ID. So dot ID equals that convention. Um, okay, then filter our list from the originals. And so, oops, I don't want to select that, obviously. Um, no, didn't update the list accordingly, but it's okay. Let's do some testing here. Let's do console.log, and we're going to do it on original courses, and we're doing it on query params, because we're going to have to see what's going on there. Console. Ah, see, it's not actually noticing the change. It should notice that that information has changed. So that's an important, an important point uh, to note there. Now it could also be, let's put it all the way at the top just to be safe. Okay, so uh, courses compute, original courses. Original courses is an object. So let's set original courses to courses here, which is the data that came across, which was shipped in as an array, um, and so even their original courses, um, in this case, courses is on an object, it's an array. That really shouldn't matter, but you know, just for a consistency standpoint. Okay. We still, hmm, we still need to notice those changes happening on query params. Query params is an object. And so, hmm. Query params is binded to app route query params with two way binding. I wonder if it's something to do with, with um, endpoint and data not being set. Um, endpoint data. So there's data and there's tail and there's route. And route comes from location which is where query param should come from. Do I include location? Yeah. Okay, and I include route. 
and yet it's not uh, noticing those per se. Hmm. Now it is, I mean, you can see it, it's putting it in the, the URL, but the thing is it needs to actually notice that those things have changed. Now I wonder if that has to do with my notify aspect um, that I told this not to notify. Notify true. Let's see if that does anything. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we did anything weird in Eller and App Open Studio before to get that part to filter. Okay. Query params. Submissions built off of it. It has notify true, but that's clearly not doing anything. Ooh, now we do have some observers. Hmm. Ah, okay, so that's the part that's the part I was missing. So we do have okay, all right, that's that's an important point. Um we do have these. Uh so in in Polymer, you can do observers. Um also listen on route change and whenever route changes it's making sure whether or not it's outside the context of what you currently clicked and whether or not to get rid of it type of a deal. So let's put in some of those, some of these capabilities here um, that we had previously not um, because they are important. Um, so route change has to do with the starting matching the ending point and whether or not to reload the page because you went to something that's outside current scope. Um, Assignment filter change is not going to be the name of it, <laughs> um, but it's effectively, you know, we're just going to say, was it filter changed? Okay. Um, filter changed. Okay. The filter is going to be when it, when you actually change the filter, we need to know what the heck you just did um, and then what to, to filter as a result. So I'm going to say project, or sorry, not project, program. Um, and this is going to be filter changed just on program and then program, 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 program. Um, in this case, it's like setting each of these to what, what they should be when they come through. This block cycle just ensures you don't end up getting a whole bunch of things messing with each other. I'm just going to do a filter change on query params and see if that helps. Um, I'm not not doing the delete toast thing. The route changed has to do with when we're in a larger application. Um, do you, did something claim to change the route or, you know, did you click on something that actually should be within the CMS, but it's, you know, within this little app so that you don't just steal those, uh, those routes automatically. Make sure it's within scope of the current routes kind of a thing. Um, helps with compatibility when, when you're doing hybrid mode uh, applications. So, uh, query params dot, oh, okay, academic. What we're going to have here is we're going to have query params, and it's that the filter changed, okay, so user has changed the filters on the page. On the page. Okay, and so we're going to make sure that something didn't claim to prevent this from running multiple times just to be safe, and we're going to make sure that query params is not undefined, and then we're going to do query params dot, uh, it's not academic. No, I guess it is academic, isn't it? It has to do with the parameters being set. Um, I mean, I would think that we're just observing that the query parameter has changed and then we're, we're doing something about it. Oh, okay. Oh, that has to do with the routing chain. Okay, so the filtering... I see. So this was for complex filtering rules, basically. I was doing some kind of crazy stuff before that implied, hey, you can only, you okay, I see. I was implying before you can only do, um, you can only filter one thing at a time uh, for the other application. This one, you're going to be able to filter whatever you want, and you could do groupings of them if you really want. Academic. And this one is program. Okay. 
program, academic, academic, program, program, and this is course, 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 okay. And then that's data.page, page, page, page. Let's see if that does it. Or if it just gets mad. <laughs> no, it didn't get mad either, but um, we're not getting our route changed event. So this is an event listener that I'm listening for. Um, and I don't believe anything is firing that currently. I wonder what actually triggers route change to fire, which would then change the query parameters. And when the query parameters change, it should run the submission compute because query parameters has been modified in some way. Hmm. I mean, it does load and puts those there, so that's neat. <laughs> I I really want to get it to do the front end, the front end filtering as part of this before we move move it forward um, in into the real data land. So we've got these cards here, and I can click and go, and it jumps to you know node four, which clearly doesn't exist. Cool. Um, so it pulls the ID correctly for those. Um, so we've got route change. Well, you know, we've got a lot of the correct wiring in here for these parts. Um, let's, let's get to the next, the next step of the application here. So this is the entire process, right, of modeling this to wire up to fake data um, so that I've got this standalone application that ultimately when I would put this in something else, I'm just going to take this and copy and paste. And so long as it can get JSON from a source path, it, it's good to go. Um, well, part of the initial build process that starts getting everything together to do this, um, other than the fact that it needs to rewrite the word boilerplate better, um, it, it starts to write some important things in manifest.json. And manifest.json is typically used for telling a front-end application or, to, or telling the browser that, hey, I'm a front-end application, you should display me this way on mobile and things like that. It's, it's some different efficiencies for progressive web apps. But we added this little app integration area to it, knowing that it's just going to be there for apps anyway, um, which then Drupal is able to read off of and generate routing for the app dynamically. So we're going to call this CIS uh, dashboard replacement. Okay, and that's going to automatically add a menu item where this is, you know, not the long-term solution, but we wanted to have a menu item there. Um, and then we're going to have a endpoint for getting app data for this. So we're going to call this uh, like CIS, what is this? This is LRN app CIS app data. This is going to imply that when Drupal rips this into the page after creating menu routing, that it's just going to, um, it's going to know how to look for that quote unquote JSON, you know, demo.json type of thing. Um, what it's going to do as well is it's going to look for a file that's named the same as the element in this case. And so I don't know why my little script didn't rename this correctly, but it's supposed to just be uh, that, I believe, with app at the end. Um, and we can find another example. There we go. There's LRN app media upload .php, which is the name of the tag. And if we look at the manifest for it, we see it calls a certain callback path, wiring this in, and then it exposes it as a block um, so that you can have a little upload block that works anywhere. So there's, there's some different stuff that you know, starts to get more specific in its, the Drupal integration that it achieves. But the important thing is that the majority of the development is not happening in the content management system. Um, I think it's very important. So. We've got this little boilerplate in here. I'm going to name this LRN app, CIS. OK, apps. And it's a callback for this path. So this is a path that's going to be generated automatically. In this case, it just kind of stubs out like, hey, here's what you can do with this to get some initial data back out from it. Um, so this can start to relate to the data that we just mapped before. OK, so now we're stepping into more of the how do you get this integrated into you know, a content management system, in this case, Drupal. So I need to match this JSON schema, more or less, 
Um, and if I match this JSON schema, because now I know it'll render correctly, then I know that I can get it to render correctly from the back end. So if I structure it where, okay, this is going to load up nodes, cool. Um, instead of a range for them, we're just going to get all of them. And a uh, property condition is that they are published. And I believe it's a um, entity condition that um, it's entity bundle, I think. And the bundle is uh, bundle is of type uh, CIS course. Now I can go into this is where we start to bridge between the two worlds. I can go into here and I can look and go, okay, well it's called a course in CIS, so I should just call it course, right? Um, so that's a bundle. Drupal system has entities and it has bundles, um, and so this is a node, and the type of the node is a course. Um, I'm going to see that those courses are published, uh, order them by title descending, as opposed to when they were last updated. That'd be kind of weird. Um, and then flip the results if they're not found. Cool. So we now want to match this. So I, I load a node off of the item that was in question. And now we can start to kind of uh, piece it into this other, you know, this data array here pretty much. So. I'm going to say that return uh, equals, oh, uh, now we're not going to do that. We'll do it for the individual item. So we've got ID, so it's ID equals no dot NID. Okay, and now we need data, and data is going to be, uh, it's, um, it's a std object, std object, I think is what it is for, for nodes. It's been a while since I, I made one of these. Uh, I'll have to find an example of one. Uh, the Open Studio actually uses a bunch of services that we wrote. Ah, std class, there we go. So new std class, that was what I was thinking. Okay. Um, and then entity field query. Ah, see, it's just bundle entity condition. Um, so let's do that. Make sure it's published. Okay, and then put that here and so up its course. See, so now, you know, much like I was borrowing things on the front end, I can borrow them uh, behind the scenes as far as, you know, the Drupal, Drupal's module module system, PHP in general, you know, just standardized development practices here. Um, so let's do this. So we load the return data and then we say the data equals new object class. Okay, and then in data, we're gonna have a machine name and that equals node uh, field machine name, und, zero, machine, name, I believe it is what it is on the Drupal side. Uh, we're not going to worry about body right now. Another thing I can I can do for helping him map this out, and this starts to, you know, obviously get very Drupal specific, um, but so I have this, this course that I put in place before. Well, if I know the node ID, which the node is node uh, slash... 20, I can do a .json and uh, get a pretty decent rendering of that. I can see field machine name actually is just going to be value. Whoops. It's just going to be value instead of anything crazy off of that. Um, now, I know that because I've worked with Drupal a while and we have you know certain paths that let, let you do things. You can also call up devil if you have the devl module installed. And I can look for a machine name and see the structured machine name is und0, and then there's value right there. So I can access value. Um, when doing data wiring with Drupal specifically, this is very useful to have these kind of two things open at the same time. So then I want name, title, image, color. And for color right now, we're just going to say red, right? Because I don't have a property for that on the other side. Um, body, we're not going to do. 
Okay, and then um, I'm definitely going to need some kind of URL eventually, but right now we'll. Right now that was generated on the front end with this thing. Now it also, I think I had the word node. Yeah, I had node programmed in there. Um, so obviously I don't want to do it that way. Um, so active should be get attribute data dot local course ID, right? But that is a, it's the um, array position on the front end. Yes, it is the array position on the front end, the ID of it. And so I should be able to then do uh, this dot courses dot uh, and then active because that's going to be the course ID in question. And then that dot data dot URL or URI is probably a better convention. So now in my little demo data spec here, I should put a URI and URI in this case can be node slash six or whatever, but it could be anything else, right? That, that makes it less Drupal specific. That's another thing um, that I can kind of keep in mind when doing this. I can write this in such a way that even the, the, that both the front end and the back end assets have the ability to be much more repurposable to other solutions. Um, so I can just borrow from myself later. <laughs> um, so we've got name and title, <clears throat> okay. Name in this case relates to the title value, which is a little confusing. Again, I'm mapping from front end or back end to front end. Um, and then title field, there's course title. I can find course title with intro to algebra as that is this. And so now I got a nice clean, there we go, field course title. So we've got those map. Now I gotta find image. Image uh, is banner in this case. And banner can get a little odd because you have to convert a URI. Um, so again, kind of borrowing some already repurposed code. Um, I can look at what I did with the services in Open Studio. Image, field image, image. Basically, you have to run a, a function that will help convert it into something else. Uh, file output, there we go. So I, have a, I had a function that actually could take images and, and files and automatically generate what the, what the correct location was for those. Um, okay, so let's find, uh, in this case, yes. I do for sure see the benefit of non-procedural programming <laughs> when I start to get into these scenarios, but yeah, there we go. Okay, so I could call this silly thing. I'm just gonna do file create URL, um, which is a, a thing built into Drupal to do. So that will take the URI in question and it's gonna convert it from what it was as far as the banner reference to who knows where it's stored in the file system to an actual location that's usable. Um, and then it's gonna set it to image. And now I added support for data URI in what my little example data model is. And now I can make that node an ID on this side. So now I've got all the data aspect mapped right there. It's pretty cool. Um, now we get into relationships and it gets a little more confusing. Um, so in my data model over on this side, um, I don't actually, I don't think I have this in a, in any program, no, see there's program classification. I don't have it in anything yet. Um, so I'll have to add it to something. So let's do edit. I believe I have program, yeah, a program I can put in the Elms program and I don't have any academic homes at the moment, so I'll have to make one in here. Okay. Academic area. It's going to be stuff, stuff. And the color of stuff is purple, obviously. <laughs> um, okay, now I have an academic area. I can shoot back over to courses. And let's edit math 100 again. All right, now academic home is stuff. Save. Okay. Let's go to Sing 100 and make sure that it's wired up to some information just so that it, you know, 
the data comes across in a way that's reasonable looking. Okay, so I've got that on both of those. Now let's take um, Sing 100 in this case, and let's do Devil so that we can look at what those relationships are. And you see there's program classification, target ID is eight, and then there's uh, also Academic home, okay. And so what I can do now is, all right, build out the relationships. If node, all right, so if is set, we'll make sure that that actually exists. Then what we're gonna do is Academic equals node load node that. Okay, now we have access to all the data in academic, and academic uh, title is probably the only thing we care about in this case, as well as NID and academic.nid. So we're going to do off of data, now we're into relationships, right? And so we'll do data. And then off of data comes, or sorry, data is not off of here. We have relationships as a separate thing. So we do relationships and then program, which is another object. And then program is going to have data off of it even. So we'll do program and then we'll do academic. Okay. And then off of program, we'll have data. And off of academic, we'll have data. Okay. And then now we're going to do, whoops, test and make sure academic home exists. Because it doesn't have to have an academic home necessarily. Um, and so if it exists, then we're going to load it in this case, just so we can get the title, which is a little annoying. I <laughs> uh, wish I had the node and the node ID and the title in the same thing. I wouldn't have to make a full on object query just to pull it then. Um, but now we're going to do academic ID equals academic NID. And then we're going to do the data for it, which in this case, we're just sending name for the purposes of what we're writing today. And that's going to be title. Okay, so now we can replicate that make sure program exists and then program from here was pro whoops, program classification. Tricky to uh, copy and paste that. <laughs> program, program. Okay, so then we check program and then in this case I write the word program. Program, 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 program. Okay, so now that should be um, the data mapped in the exact same way that it was previously, assuming it finds nodes that are courses and that are published, it's gonna sort them by title, and then it's going to uh, wire in all of the information behind the scenes, and then it's gonna return this information. Now, I did write quite a bit of code, but relative to what this is going to do, it's like nothing. Um, so what the Web Components app module does, uh, which is the module we wrote in Drupal is now it's going to securely build um, routing that gets to this function to return this JSON blob in question. And it's going to bring you there in such a way that you are aware of, you know, what brought us here and what other, in whatever criteria we have. So even just from building, you know, against uh, different systems, right? I've got this front end component that was able to map to, uh, you know, in this case, demo.json. Uh, then I was able to kind of step back and forth and go, okay, how do I make this not specific to Drupal? How do I make this work in anything? I was able to develop the entire thing in a vacuum. And it, I think that's an important point. Whenever I'm building in a vacuum, it, replace I'm with your, uh, you know, your design team or your development team, right? These two teams have been able to stay uh, in their world, in their sweet spot, what they can do. Not everybody is a crazy full stack developer like I'm apparently uh, becoming. But that front end and back end is two very separate types of areas with this slim layer 
of interfacing between the two, right? Um, and it, with enough, you know, little automation scripts and things like uh, we did to position this stuff, you can really start to crank these out quickly. Um, you know, we're closing in on two hour mark here and we're about to get into the actual getting this wired into Drupal and it's gonna take way less than it did to do the other parts. Um, the other thing from a long-term sustainability perspective is this isn't dependent on PHP, this isn't dependent on Drupal, it just happens that we have taught Drupal how to interface with this quickly. So, you know, I could even name this function like Drupal 7 and then in our manifest have that this is to Drupal 7 because that's what it is in our case. Um, but then maybe I'm going to start building out a library of how people talk to this one design element across different languages. Maybe it's not PHP at all. It could be anything for that matter. Uh, I could have examples of how to do it in 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever. Keep those all in the same place. Laravel, Symfony, um, anything really. And manage all that with the same, you know, basically leveraging a lot of the same team members um, in, in the same way. So I, you know, we've started to actually build out um, our own little services area. I, I went back to it to refer to some things uh, slightly. But so we're abstracting, even those, the calls of those functions a lot of times on our side when we implement these things don't have um, a lot of Drupal code in them. Um, so like in the, the example of the LRN app Open Studio, what's powering that, we pull in and reference our existing services and then the routing goes to this endpoint, but then the service is doing everything. Like there's, there's nothing Drupal here in any way. Now, obviously there's Drupal interfacing going on in this, you know, get submissions function, um, but it, it helps isolate what we're doing pretty heavily, right? So we've got a lot of stuff that, that goes and gets uh, query, you know, gets, gets data in, in faster ways um, around Elm's learning network but uh, which is Drupal 7, parts of it are Drupal 7 based at least. Um, but then we can kind of write all of this in a way that we're, we're kind of targeting and knowing what parts of our infrastructure and the application we're building actually end up touching, you know, other open source projects in this case. Um, because other things, you know, if, if we had a different way of getting submissions, other things have connotations of published or unpublished. Um, other things use class-based PHP and whatnot. Um, so just you know, trying to keep things as abstract as possible for our own purposes, but also to, to remain agile, to move to different islands, so to speak, later on. So let's, let's see how we get from um, here to into Elms. And so this is, you know, this could be here to into Drupal, we'll say as well. Um, so I've got my LRN web component. I've built the entire thing in a vacuum. Let's, let's, actually just push this up to version control. Um, so it's LRN components, LRN app CIS. Um, I've done all this building. We can do a get status on it. Let's see, I changed a whole bunch of stuff. We're gonna do get add A, get commit M, um, initial commit from the video. Woo! I don't know why that happens sometimes. Git push origin master. Now you might note I didn't set up a Git repo. The tooling that we used before set up a Git repo, knowing the structure of where we end up pushing these things. And now here's all the code that I've been working on here. Now you could take this and you could uh, grab it. You could do a Bower install and you could run it on your you know local development environment, completely agnostic of what we've been doing um, or the way that we're going to end up using it. So what we would do is we build these things out in a vacuum. Um, as if they're talking to a data source, but it's just a blank JSON file or, you know, a, a generic JSON file. And then to get it into our own rigging, right? Because we've tried to keep this separate as long as possible. One, um, what we're trying to do basically is replace this thing that says CIS dashboard. Um, CIS dashboard in our universe of things is, um, it was an angular prototype to do what we said, we, we need a better looking way of getting access to this information. So we've got a little bit of a, a crazy structure to Elm's Learning Network. We use a lot of sim links and things. Um, and so this is just to get it in scope of the Web Components and Polymer project. Basically in the Web Components module for Drupal, uh, if you think of like sites all libraries in Drupal, there's a Web Components directory and then in the web components directory, there's Polymer, so that we know that we're specifically targeting 
things that are built around Polymer. Now, yes, all different web components can play nice together. Um, this is mostly done because of the way that we read things off the file system. Uh, if we were to switch to Stencil.js, um, those might, you know, Stencil.js doesn't use Bower, for example. And so the, 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 the reliance of Polymer currently on Bower, even just in the name of folders and things, um, is why we're, we're still sticking with this approach. But so basically we've got in Polymer, if you enable the Polymer apps module, there's an apps directory. And any app that you put in there that's built out in the methodology we just showed is going to have a whole ton of things um, that reference back to where they should go. And so what we're going to do, and this is, you know, later on we'll move this someplace else. So it only shows up in CIS, but I don't want to get stuck in the weeds of, of things with Elms. Um, we're going to put this in scope so that it would work in uh, Elms Learning Network. And so what we do in Elms Learning Network, um, we structure Drupal a little bit differently. Uh, so we've got our system and then the code that lives on the server is all contained within core, you know, our documentation, other things are there. Then we've got this, this directory tree which branches off and this maintains Drupal in a, a slightly different way. Um, and then we've got our web components. So we've got all our design abstracted from our code, which I think is kind of cool, um, even under the hood as we build towards these. So then we've got apps, elements, and services. So these services are the ones that, you know, I pointed to a second ago. These are some code libraries that, yes, they are interfacing with Drupal heavily, but we're starting to work towards just having all of our develop our backend code uh, separated from the majority of our front end types of things. Then we've got elements. So the elements are all the design elements that have been, you know, showing and Bower installing and whatnot. And then we've got apps, which are these more advanced things, like what we just built uh, right now. So now I'm going to take that app. If you imagine that I, I would build that app um, that we just that I just showed, and so I'm going to do that, and then at some point I'm going to be like, you know what? We're going to this is time to test it in a real place. I'm going to fork it basically, and I'm going to pull it into Elm's Learning Network, and so it's going to go in our apps directory. Um, now the primary change from there is that this is a real Bower components directory, whereas mine are symbolically linked ones. And so I don't know if I can just copy a symbolic link in. Oh, sure enough, I can. Cool. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure if I could actually do that in, um, in OSX, but I can. So now I've, I've created most of what I need right there, actually. <laughs> um, uh, I need to do one more thing so it'll show up in scope. And this is, I, I mentioned before, Yeoman that we're, um, we're working on some scripts to even do, help do this stuff for us. Um, so I've got the apps there, and there's my CIS, my LRN app CIS app. Um, if I do I get status on this stuff, you can see, hey, uh, well, there's some OAuth 2 stuff that I was playing with previously um, that for the purposes of this, I'm just going to delete for now. There we go. Okay, so there's LRN app CIS. Um, the next thing I'm going to do in this is I'm going to delete the .git directory for the version control aspect. That way the files um, will show up and be included. Then I'm going to, uh, let's open up a Git desktop GUI so we can just see. There we go. Okay, so there's the files that it's going to pull in um, and that it found. Now it's got all these path resolutions. Um, we talked about during, so dot, 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 Bower components. Um, and so now if we go, if we're in our app and we get out of our app's locations, we go dot, 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 Bower components, which actually is a symbolic link over to the elements directory that we have with all of our elements in it. I don't know why the, why OS X isn't reloading all the elements that are in there, but they are there. Um, so now to get this to work in CIS and show up, uh, I need to make one symbolic link, and this is, you know, thus far, all that stuff was pretty just, hey, this these things live someplace, that's cool. Um, and I need to do that, whoop, web components, Polymer, apps, and you'll see it's it's right here. These ones also do it for these, these global ones. Um, eventually, you know, one day when you see this in an actual location, it's not going to live here. Um, but just to get it in here faster. Okay, so there's LRN app CIS. And now look at version control. 
We've got LRN app CIS in place. Another interesting thing about just our, our development workflow in general with these things is um, I, I can work on all of these and I'm actually, uh, I'm gonna push these up to our 10X branch. And now I haven't even tested this in Drupal, mind you, um, but just the pattern at which we work on these things is such that um, it's not gonna influence anything. Um, I did all the design aspects in a vacuum. I did all the, the other code generation in a vacuum. And so we're gonna associate this to, oh, I have some console.logs in there that it doesn't like. Oh, post install, okay, let's get rid of post install. Um, you don't need to do that. I could skip that error, but I don't want to for the moment. <laughs> It was just, we have some linters that, that it'll complain. All right, so I'm going to push this up to 0.10.x. So the front end code is compartmentalized. The back end code is compartmentalized. Um, I'm going to pull this into a, a running Vagrant instance I have locally so I can work on this a little bit further. So I have Vagrant running here. Okay, so now in Elms on a server, right? This is Vagrant, it's you know a fake server basically. Um, let's minimize that. Um, you can see that I've got that directory tree structure and then I've got core DSLM code. Whoops, sorry. Backpack, web components. Okay, so there's, you know, just to prove that stuff is there. I'm gonna do um, uh, git pull. Actually, a lot of times I do a reset, but I'm gonna do a reset on my development box here. So 0.10.x. It's gonna go get all that, okay. And now this project is running at that location. Uh, Elms has its own little command line thing called Leafy. And I'm just gonna run a bulk permission cleanup um, just to make sure they're the same um, as what the, the front end expects. So now I'm gonna do a D at online CC all. Um, or actually, you know what, no, we're, we'll go to the website and do that. So I'm gonna go to the website and refresh. You'll see nothing has changed. Hooray! I have all this new code and nothing has changed. That was that was the hope. Um, so let's flush caches here and see if anything changes. Oh, there's a new button. Okay, so now it says CIS dashboard replacement. And we go to CIS dashboard replacement and I bet we have an error or something. Good. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> All right, the server was not able to find. Libraries, Polymer, ah, apps, SRC. Oh, I see, okay. I know what that is. That has to do with um, another Elms specific thing as far as asset resolution. So to in order to get these all to resolve correctly, um, in our apps directory, this helps, this helps uh, Drupal discover it and learn about what it is. But when we actually want all of our items to be able to resolve to the correct paths, we actually have to have them delivered from this apps SRC directory. So for example, with OpenStudio, when OpenStudio gets added into the page, and I talked about um, this, these, these resolutions, right? Dot, 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 Bower components. That works great in a vacuum. But when you're out on a you know, deployed code base, you want to keep your code structured the same way and have it just work, to be perfectly honest. It should work the same way as if it was in a vacuum. However, when you deploy it into a larger system, it's no longer in a vacuum. Um, so, and again, this will come into play with some Yeoman tooling, um, or actually we'll probably just have a watch directory do this for us automatically, but it then is referencing that same file from before, symbolically links to the file's SRC directory so that then when you, it, it does dot to dot dot to dot, it finds Bower components. Well, all these elements are actually symbolically linked way over here in web components. So it gives us, you know, at, so we get the tooling and we get, you know, like a grunt task or whatever. Um, we'll be able to develop all this stuff completely disconnected from our own infrastructure. And the infrastructure will just notice where we want to put the things. So we've optimized our developer experience to the point that we can build this stuff completely in a vacuum, and we're, you know, as I just showed in the last few minutes here, we're a few steps away from automating, going from complete vacuum to working in production 
um, and by production, I mean productduction. This is you know in a vagrant space. Um, so uh, I'm going to go into you know basically I just need to push up one other thing. So whoops, let's do that sim link, and then the universe will be happy. So we need some closure, Drupal seven libraries. Components, polymer, okay, apps hyphen src, and we see these go into a weird way down the tree. So we'll go copy that apps lrn app cis, and then needs to go into src, and this is actually now pointing to lrn app cis, if I believe correct. Now when I go into lrn app. CIS. Um, no, sorry. I, no, nope. Missed it by one directory. <laughs> RM, RLN app CIS. This is why this is why we automate things. Um, okay. LRN app CIS. There we go. Okay, so now when I go into LRN app CIS, I see the director the files, which is what I was hoping to do. Much like if I go to studio submission, I see the files. Okay, so this is related to that other thing. Push that up, go on to our Vagrant box again. Get our fetch all, get hard reset 0.10.x. It'll put that one sim link in place, okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. So now um, it, it clearly loaded the asset. That's awesome. Um, let's see what's going on from here. So now we've got cannot convert undefined null to object. Let's look at the network, see if it made any requests. Okay, it does make a request for data, but it doesn't get back anything meaningful. Okay, that's really important. So let's look in our PHP code here now. Um, and actually, we're going to close these other versions of the file. This is also kind of a development uh, thing that I end up doing then. So I'm going to close those copies, and I'm going to go to this now running uh, in the context of Elm's Learning Network, uh, which, you know, if you think of that as like your build target, so to speak. Um, so apps, CIS, okay. so. Now I can just FTP files into the box, basically. Um, so we've got return, clearly return didn't make anything. So let's make return send back as data result, um, result of the nodes that it was supposed to have found. Okay, post that up. Let's see if it actually, no, see data is null, so that, Entity field query is not correct, effectively. Um, and that would be because there's there's nothing running running the uh, the entity field query, as far as I can can tell. <laughs> it's not actually it's 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 not doing anything as far as result. Yeah, there's no result result equals of this thing. Um, well, that's funny. Um, so I think it's like this. I haven't done one of those in a while, to be perfectly honest. I usually just copy and paste for myself. Oh, yep, that was it. Okay, so we see that we got course references. So again, these little things that, you know, I couldn't have done that in a vacuum and known, okay, I'm you know, not getting any data back. Um, so now, this other stuff will bother to execute, which is nice. Let's upload that. Look at the response data now. Data, we've got um, program. Okay, so it didn't put it in relationship, so I know that I have my data a little bit structured incorrectly. Um, but we're getting there. Okay. And we see there's, ah, there's that cannot put default object empty value in there. Okay, so. It's on relationships. Ah, so I need a relationships program and relationships academic. That was the problem. 
All right, and then it's not um, on return of that, it's on return of relationship. Let's see if that helps. Because the data will be correct, or at least should be correct. Oops, let's see. Okay, 15. Relationships, academic stuff. And you see, it, it's getting there, right? It's, it's actually pulling those things together correctly. We've got a URI, we've got an ID in the right place. This structure is looking very similar to what the other side was um, in the, in the demo.json. Now let's see what's, what else is going on here because it's still complaining about something on line 17. And that is because this uh, return is an array, but I don't do the std class thing. Standard class, upload that. Now it's not complaining about that, but it probably still won't work on the front end. Okay, so that error has gone away. Nice. Um, now let's take manifest. I, I don't want it to show a title. Um, I don't know if that'll just go away. I if I have to have a clear cache. I think you have to clear cache. Uh, that's the, the other aspect is you can, um, you can actually you could say not to be in the menu or um, you know, whether or not to display that. So let's, let's call this um, courses, right? something instead of that silly version. And you'll see what it'll do here. I'll go um, and let's kill the menu system. I think it'll still pick, pick it up there. There we go, okay. So now I have a path, there we go, it's courses. And I'll select courses from this little menu. And it says courses there, okay. It's already more clear, all right. Now, let's see what's breaking on this part. Um, cannot convert undefined to null. And that is in line 275. It's from handle response. Okay. Handle response here. Um, so we can go into our actual CIS list. There's the handling the response, and it's complaining starting at line 294 is what's kicking it off. It's courses. This dot to array um, from this dot CIS response dot data dot courses. Well, let's, um, oh, <laughs> I don't have the, I don't have the data model the same way, do I? No, I don't. I have, I have data. And it's expecting data and then courses. Okay, so so it's um, it's stepping down into you know the CS response and there's the status code and then data, but then it's expecting everything to just be lumped into courses. So one thing I can do here, I could just do courses, right? Because my return data basically needs offset an additional array position. And there we go. So now we are pulling in from Drupal 7, um, in this case, in the context of Elms. Um, this is a Polymer app now running. Obviously, you know, have to do some, some theme consistency, but um, we are now at the two hour and 22 minute mark, and I just spent the majority of the time someplace else. Um, which I think is the really important aspect. Um, I touched, you know, I didn't get into Drupal until right at the end there. Um, so as a, as a Band-Aid, you know, because we want to click and there's a, you know, course URL thing, right? Um, let's see. I didn't actually test that previously. Let's um, console.log that because that should be attempting to do something. It might be catching it because of the, that routing silly thing that I mentioned before. Oh, cannot read property data of undefined, there we go. So let's look at what that even fires. That's undefined. Um, what is data course ID is course.id, okay. So let's see what that comes up with. Um, Oh, you know, I wonder if that's actually supposed to be original courses, just to be safe. Um, but let's see what active is equal in here, because that'll give us some more information. 
And you see now this has helped expose that there's actually a problem in in my uh, in the thing I'm wiring, right? It's not a problem. Oh shoot, I went to <laughs> that is not what I wanted to do. I don't want to change the URL. Um, that this is a you know by integrating it into a system, it's exposed that there is a problem in the wiring of my design components. All right, so item twenty. Okay. So that's un active item 20 is undefined. So now we can go through and see how is this keyed, right? Um, and see how console.onlist.courses is keyed, because I thought they were keyed based on that array position, but they might not be. Clearly, they are not. Um, ah, so I have to do a um, filter for for that item. So. I should be able to do, I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, I should be able to take something like this. Okay, let's look at this. Oh, right, to me, a six. Potter would be so proud of me. Um, so, filter courses, we'll do a let filter courses equal this dot original courses, which is the thing that I want to get access to. But I want to filter by course ID equals active here. And so if course ID doesn't equal active, otherwise it equals that. And now let's see console.log filtered course or find course. Let's do that. That makes more sense. Um, find course. Okay. All right. Select. A hey, 20 on 328. 328 is active. And then the find course. Hey, there we go. We found item 20. I am loving ES6 already. Okay. So the only thing is that it's always going to be the zeroth position um, in that case. Um, I think I can do a, a dot pop. Um, dot pop. Uh, script array pop I don't call those very often either yeah it is just dot pop okay um, so we'll say in this case all of that I wonder if I could even do a dot pop I don't want, I don't want to do that way <laughs> find course equals dot pop okay now that is our course in question which then we can do if type of Find course uh, dot data right. Close that window. Um, dot data dot data dot URI dot URI. So we validate that it actually exists. Um, does not equal equal type of undefined. You can write those in a million different ways, but that's how I like to. Okay, then we're going to send people to the find course dot uri off of the base path which the base path should be uh, something small so let's take those out okay now let's document this a little bit okay find the course by its id and filter just it if find course dot i think it's dot size was equals one for our example here it's just going to be you know a rate is greater than zero right um, or is it is it dot length for arrays in JavaScript I think it's dot length um, then if we found one make it the top level item okay double check we have a URI that let's see okay there's our static go back to our app in question and now when I click on that you'll see it takes me to undefined but that's because base path is being set to uh, something I think dynamically um, hmm so that that one I'm not 
well, you know what, you are, we're going to have to change that then. Um, this would be the URL to send someone to as opposed to URI. Okay, so if, if we then say the application is going to need to do this whole stinking thing, I don't think I use URI anywhere else. No, okay. Um, and so well, we'll keep that at URI because it could be URL as well. All right, so now we'll just set it to the URI, but now the onus is going to have to be on the application when it sets URI, uh, which it does, oops, URI, there we go, right there, it's going to have to add uh, a base path of some form in order to resolve correctly. So now when we reload this thing, I can click on Math 100, and I am taken to Math 100. So obviously, that is, that's not the full-on integration, but this is kind of our, you know, you've seen the entire build process. It's why I wanted to record this whole thing. End-to-end -end of nothing, you know, an idea to building out a full, uh, a full-on po uh, Polymer app that's headless using other elements in question, um, and then how we go about wiring that into fake data, how we then go about wiring that into real data and what our build process looks like, and then all the way to this, I would consider a hybrid app. And so it's a headless, you know, all of this up here is delivered by Drupal. And then what Drupal is in this case in charge of delivering into the page, there we go, um, is you can see that the, the, pol the web components polymer and web components app modules, uh, sub modules, have automatically wired in CSRF tokens, have done uh, created endpoints and know what the base path is of this application and know what the source path to get data is. Um, and then also, you know, just something for you know, some basic class designation. It can get hooked into, so in this case, Elms then modified this and said, hey, here's this other data in case you need it. Um, in this case, you don't. Um, so we're kind of making, making Drupal really important when it comes to the endpoint, but all of the actual work to get there happens somewhere else. It's pretty awesome. Um, and it's also, you can just, you can see even just from the length of this video um, and the time spent on different parts, our emphasis is really uh, user centric and design centric now, and then shifting backwards into data. Um, this from not knowing what I was doing to right now, uh, this, we spent a half an hour on the Drupal integration side to get up to that point was two hours. So even just there, right, uh, you know, contextual, my, the amount of time and effort we're putting into A versus B, um, the integration side is the least of your concern. Now, granted, I've been ramping up into this tooling approach and stuff for uh, 11 months now. Um, and we have these you know, development workflows that we've been refining, but this is the type of stuff that we can bring to uh, to the content management world in general, uh, you know, Drupal being one of our targets that we use, um, these type of workflows where our CMSs need to learn about our design assets, need to understand by simple modification, hey, I need, to, I, I need you to ask for data here. Can you just wire that? Um, Drupal also built this menu path um, because of manifest. If I were to take out this menu piece here, upload that, um, you know, kind of what we were then ultimately going for is that like I, I go here um, and then let's use a Drupal convention from before. I know what my path, it's not gonna be courses anymore, it's gonna be uh, app slash LRN app CIS is the path. Um, this actually, you know, you can see it's all the apps are gonna be found under apps. So it's creating the routes automatically off of there and then it's getting data off of slash data, for example. Uh, you can also have access to multiple routes of data uh, off of one thing. But now when I go to the homepage in Elms, I'm gonna get that courses backend. I'm not getting that, or I do get that link up there at the moment. Oh, I have some, some automatically refreshing code on the homepage. So there's you know yet another reason to get the heck away from jQuery. Um, but if I were to clear the menu cache, you'll see this courses link goes away. And then I get into my redirect HE double hockey sticks from before. There we go. So it knows that I'm on this page, but I can you know, blow away the cache and get rid of that, that menu reference if I, so, if I wanted to. Um, 
what I do now, right? So now I have this working. This you know kind of completes the loop. I have validated that this works um, in the context of some other system. Um, now I'm going to go and take my my things that I have here. We're going to go back to our LRN web components and LRN app CIS, and now dump all those in in their stay. Okay. So I've kind of you know validated this work someplace else. So now I know that I can pull those code changes back into here for the you know the real thing that goes out the door. Or get add a get command m updated and now works in Drupal. Again with a double quote, git push, origin, master. And now, you know, again, getting into, you know, development workflow practices, I might then, you know, tag this for a release um, that it actually works. Git push tags, right? So now I have a tagged release up there and I said, hey, this actually works to people. And now maybe our, you know, then application process down in Elms becomes, okay, once this is validated to work, then we get a tagged release and then we know we can push this in um, and start start working on an issue. So now, you know, I can push these changes up to um, this numbered issue here. Um, and, I, and we're gonna keep working on it after this video is in you know, question is long gone. This is not the end of this. Um, we'll keep working on this. But uh, I hope this gives you a window into our world, why we're you know, pretty over the moon about um, about the approaches that this that this affords and kind of stacking these Lego bricks together, right? Like I was able to repurpose this one and it was repurposing a ton of different things from other elements, both that I made as well as elements in the community. Um, and then whenever we would go to build another dashboard homepage type of a thing, now I've got all of these techniques in place. Um, so we're rebuilding these hybrid dashboards for other things and other systems, um, Drupal or otherwise, and it's you know crushing our development times. Um, so the next time I do this, now that I have this really great working example, I can get even further um, and faster. I could probably do this again in you know an hour now that I know where everything is as opposed to two and a half hours. So if you end up watching to this point, uh, you should probably go get a cookie or something. I'm gonna go eat lunch because I'm tired of talking. But um, if you're interested in learning more about the many projects that we're up to, um, you can go to elmsln.org. Uh, There's a collaboration of several units at Penn State, um, some outside groups as well. It's built on top of all the things that you just saw here, and it's really stinking cool to develop for.